This clip will demonstrate why omitting a relevant variable is a bad thing. So we'll start out with a correct regression model, dependent variable y being a function of two explanatory variables, x1 and x2. But perhaps you are only interested really in beta 1 and therefore someone decides to drop x2. So we only have x1 as explanatory variables and a new error term vi that also contains the effect of x2. So this is our estimated model. Now the OLS estimator for beta 1 from here, and I shall call it beta 1 tilde, I could call it het, but I call it tilde, is covariance of x1 and y divided by the variance of x1. That's just the standard definition. And the question is now, is beta 1 tilde unbiased? This is what we're going to answer. As usual, we will start investigating a question like this by substituting for yi in our formula for beta 1 tilde. Now we substitute for yi, but we substitute from the correct model because that is how y is related to x1 and x2. So we'll sub in the correct model and we get this equation. Now we have a covariance of many terms, the first one being x1 and beta naught, then x1 and beta 1 times x1 and so forth. Now the covariance of a sum is also the sum of covariances. So what we get here is the covariance of x1 and beta naught, covariance of x1 and beta 1 times x1 and so forth and then divided by the variance in the end. So let's look at these four terms in turn. The first one involves this beta naught term. Beta naught is of course just an unknown coefficient but a constant, not a random variable. And therefore the covariance between the random variable x1 and the beta naught is zero. What about covariance between x1 and ui? If our multiple linear regression model assumption 4 holds, this will be zero and we shall assume that assumptions 1 to 4 hold for the correct model. In the two middle terms we have these constants beta 1, beta 2 and they can be brought out of the covariance because they are fixed but unknown values. So what we are left with is this, the first term beta 1 times covariance of x1 and x1 but of course you know that the covariance of a variable with itself is the same as the variance divided by the variance of x1 and that means we can cancel these two out and the first term, everything that survives in the first term is the beta 1. Then plus beta 2 times the covariance of x1 and x2 divided by the variance of x1. So when we look at this term, let's next have a closer look at this particular part. So this is all the equation for beta 1 tilde. So that covariance x1, x2 divided by the variance of x1, really this looks like a slope coefficient of a simple linear regression model, in particular of that model. x2 is dependent x1 as explanatory. So that's going to be delta 1 hat, the estimate of the slope coefficient, and it will tell us something about the relationship between x1 and x2. So recall what we did is we took the definition of our OLS estimator for beta 1 from our estimation model, that was the one without x2, and we figured out that therefore beta 1 tilde is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 times delta 1 hat. From this equation we can bring the beta 1 to the left hand side and on the right hand side we get what we call the bias term, beta 2 times delta 1 hat. Now that bias will only be zero if either beta 2 is equal to zero, which means that x2 is irrelevant, or if delta 1 hat is equal to zero, which means that x1 and x2 are uncorrelated. So let's think about the sign of this bias term. Beta 2 can be negative or positive and delta 1 hat can be negative or positive. So we have four combinations, four possibilities here. If beta 2 and delta 1 hat have the same sign, so both negative for instance or both positive, the bias will be positive, otherwise it will be negative. So often we'll be forced to estimate the reduced model, dropping a variable, but then we may sometimes have a good understanding of what these terms delta 1 hat and beta 2 hat would be. So here's the practice question. Let's assume we have a correct model where the dependent variable is the average score or grades of children in a particular school 
And the explanatory variables are the expenditure per pupil in the school and the average family income for the children on the school, plus an error term. However, the model we estimate is the average score for the children in the school only being explained by the amount of per pupil expenditure in that school. So we are omitting the average income variable. We now assume that expenditure on per pupil expenditure in school and average income of families of children that go to school are negatively correlated. And this is the situation that is most likely the case in the UK due to policies like the pupil premium which gives schools extra money for children from disadvantaged backgrounds. So let's also number our equations, one for the correct one, two for the estimated one. And the question is now, will the OLS estimator for beta 1 from the estimation model 2 be unbiased or biased? And if it is biased, in what direction is the bias going to go? Is it a positive bias? So is beta 1 hat going to be larger than beta 1 or is it a negative bias? So pause and try and work it out for yourself. So here is how to tackle this problem. Let's write down the last equation we had, beta 1 tilde, and let beta 1 tilde be the estimator of, of beta 1 from equation 2, minus beta 1 equals the bias. So the first hint is that the assumption that expenditure and average income are negatively correlated, that means delta 1 hat is going to be negative, it's going to be smaller. Now beta 2, we need to question, does average income have a positive or negative impact on average score? Most likely, this will be a positive impact. There's a lot of evidence that children from richer families do better. So altogether, so these two have opposite signs. That means altogether, the bias is going to be negative. What does that mean? That means when we estimate beta 1 from equation 2, we will get a value that tends to be smaller than the true value for beta 1. So we'll underestimate the effect of expenditure on the average score.